You just heard the beautiful and lush chorale that highlights the climax of the fourth movement of the planet's Jupiter. The chorale starts with a simple motive. Mi so la. A motive is a short phrase of music that is often repeated throughout a piece. This motive features an interval jump of a third between the first two notes and then a whole step up to the last note. This combination of interval jumps is what forms the shape of the motive. The rhythm is also very simple. The last note is usually held for the same length as the first two notes occupy. Holst uses this motive throughout the whole movement, having it explicitly played or developing it. By doing this, Holst foreshadows the triumphant chorale and prepares the listener for the climax. By the time the motive in the chorale is heard, it sounds and feels familiar and at home. While the motive is developing, it gives the listener the perception of journeying through Jupiter towards the center of the piece. The foreshadowing begins immediately as Jupiter starts, allowing the listener to start learning the motive from the very beginning of the movement. The violins here open with a 16th note run. In this run, you can clearly see the shape of the motive, although the rhythm is slightly different. It goes by almost too fast for the listener to catch. From here, Holst develops and varies the motive. At rehearsal one, the French horns play a variation on it. This features the same rhythm, but a slightly different shape, which gives the whole motive a different harmony. Here at measure 37, the trumpets play the motive, again with the same rhythm and a slightly different shape. The harmony here has a dissonant quality, sounding sort of uncertain. We can see the dissonance again at measure 40, where the woodwinds play it. Holst here is giving us different flavors of the motive as we journey to the chorale. With this dissonance, he wants us to feel a sense of uncertainty. Moving straight along, at rehearsal two, the strings now play the motive. Its shape and rhythm are now almost identical to the motive in the beginning of the chorale. It still features a different, more dissonant harmony. At measure 53, we find another nearly identical but still varied example of the motive. The feeling of uncertainty is now pushing and pulling at the listener. We now arrive at rehearsal three, where for the first time we hear the exact motive from the chorale in terms of shape, rhythm, and harmony being played by the strings. He is more directly foreshadowing that motive while playing it in a completely different style than seen in the chorale. Before this, we were journeying through Jupiter, and now by directly foreshadowing, Holst is showing us that we have arrived at our first location in Jupiter. Here at Rehearsal 5, the motive is played in another new style, across multiple instruments. The violins and cellos play the first note of the motive, while the French horns harmonize with that first note. The French horns then pick up with the other two notes of the motive after that. By switching styles again, Holst has signified that we've arrived at our second location in Jupiter. At rehearsal seven, the piece dramatically changes character. The music is now quiet, and the motive seems to linger in the air, being traded between various woodwind instruments. The motive has the same shape and rhythm as in the chorale, but now features minor harmonies that are more sad sounding than before. This all signifies that we've lifted off from our landing spot and are now journeying through Jupiter once again. Lastly, at measure 187, right before the chorale plays the motive, it is repeated a few more times nearly in its exact form. Holst seems to be reminding us that we have almost reached the chorale. He lets the motive gently flutter through the air as if it were a memory. Then, the memory is instantly awakened right before our very eyes in the form of the majestic chorale played by the strings. 
the true character of Jupiter is now revealed. We have arrived at a paradise in Jupiter. To conclude, Holst used the Jupiter Corral motive to prepare the audience and let them become familiar with Jupiter. However, use of the motive does not end here. It is still used after the Corral in even different ways than before. While listening to Jupiter, see how many times you notice the motive, as it may even be stuck in your head when you leave the concert. <laughs>